Join us for an irresistible portrait of Ann Landers, starring Julie Briskman in The Lady with All the Answers, now through October 31st. Tickets at acttheater.org. The following is an audio interview for The Lady with All the Answers, featuring sex advice columnist and the stranger editor, Dan Savage. Part two focuses on her struggle with her publicized divorce, as well as the influence Ann Landers has had on Dan Savage's life and career. She had this moment where she admitted that her marriage wasn't working out. She was talking about that. And she expected, I, you know, from what I've read, that it would be the end of her career. And it wasn't. Um, people, you know, other women who'd been in similar situations wrote to her and she got tremendous support. So what happened in her career after that? How did she continue to... Well, after that, eventually she became like the advice columnist emeritus of the world. Um, you know, in the last 10 years, the column just sort of coasted along uh, on its... It you know, just kind of coasted along. She had assistants who were helping her write it. But, you know, she went from being your friend next door, your age. She went from being the same age as the readers, uh, the women, the housewives, to really being the advice you might get from your great-grandmother. America's Jewish mom. America's Jewish great-grandmother. Okay. Toward the end there. You know, there's stuff she got wrong all her life. Um, anybody who wrote in and said that her husband was a crossdresser, Ann Landers would say, uh, well, he's probably gay, which is just not true. Not true. A man with, uh, in women's underwear who isn't a drag queen, 100% chance of heterosexuality in that day. Now, what do you think Ann Landers would have made of your calling? <laughs> Well, I know she knew about it, because I talked to Rick Carlin, um, or Rick Kogan, uh, and I dedicated my first, my book, my column collection that came out a long time ago, and I'm embarrassed by, to her and Xavier Hollander, um, which were really my models. Uh, I don't think she would have approved of the language, but I think she would have approved of the common sense mm -hmm. that gets applied. Mm -hmm. You know, some people look at my column and say, oh, he's just like giving up permission slips and he's so permissive, but... I tell people not to do shit all the time. I tell people they're wrong. I tell people that what they're doing is unethical. Um, that there's a code of conduct in my column that sometimes people miss because I'm giving people permission to get a spanking. Mm -hmm. Now when we look at when we look at the the really the incredible change that happened during Her the life, time Ann Landers bruised. was writing, yeah, and um, and that she held up a mirror to that. What what? What are the major changes that we're going through now that require the sort of an Ann Landers in our in our society? And then, and at this point, I'm going to suggest that you were one of the Ann Landers in our well, but that's just culture. It. And then then there was one Ann Landers. Now there's many Ann Landerses. The, the the media culture and the culture itself is so fragmented and good. It should be. Uh, we're better off for there being uh, you know a multiplicity of voices and venues and platforms and blogs and newspapers, uh, that the culture isn't so oppressively homogenous, um, I think is a, a net gain. Uh, so what are the issues now that we're bridging? Well, obviously gay marriage, uh, human sexuality issues. Um, what are the human sexual? I mean, I know that, that might sound like a stupid question to ask, but what are the issues surrounding human sexuality that we're working through right now? Uh, monogamy is a disaster for heterosexuals. Tell me about that a little bit. I mean, you've written on this subject extensively. Oh, I have. Um, well, you know, for centuries, millennia, the deal was that uh, heterosexual relationships were monogamous in as much as the woman had to be monogamous and the man could do whatever the fuck he wanted to. And that was uh, unfair and egalitarian. And so straight people renegotiated that deal. And instead of giving straight women the same license that straight men had always enjoyed, they uh, offered straight men the deal that straight women had always endured, which is uh, monogamy for life. And it doesn't work. We, have not, we didn't evolve to be monogamous. We're not naturally monogamous. Monogamy is a struggle. I believe that people who make a monogamous commitment should honor that monogamous commitment. I think you're a fool to extract a commitment from someone you know that they are biologically wired not to be so good at keeping. Um, we need a more sophisticated and European understanding of monogamy. Ann Landers was one of the people who actually promoted the notion that a woman who's been cheated on has no choice but to leave her husband. It's the only way to restore your dignity in that situation is to walk out. And that 
is bad advice. And we're gradually moving away from that, culturally and uh, in the advice field. Um, you see that Hillary didn't leave Bill. David Vitter's wife didn't leave David Vitter. John Ensign's wife didn't leave John Ensign. And then you have, of course, Mark Sanford and uh, now Elizabeth Edwards, who probably has cause. Um, anyway, but yeah, that's the, that's the thing I think we're wrestling with now, is how do we, you know, we as advice columnists, we're supposed to uh, be helping people maintain their relationships and that is at cross purposes with promoting the ideal of the ideal of lifelong monogamy. I'm saying that. Well, here's 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 one last question. What arguments are you on the wrong side of? I mean, I know that that's a question that, I'm of course, grown, you wouldn't be able to answer. Uh, yeah, I'm sure there are, but there are plenty of people out there with opinions about it. They write me every day. Um, my understanding of trans issues has changed uh, since I started writing the column. I know. How so? How so? Um, well, I mean, 20 years ago, I wasn't even aware that there was such a thing as female to male transsexuals or even how that would work. Um, and my understanding of gender is, uh, I think, broader and deeper now. Um, and I know where the clitoris is now, and I didn't know that when I started writing my sex advice column. And that's come in handy. Uh, what am I getting wrong? Nothing else. Nothing else, nothing <laughs> else. I mean, every once in a while I make a mistake or give some bad advice. The, the perfect example is when I first started taking questions via email, I wasn't very organized or very good at it. Um, it used to be, you know, you answered a question that was written down on a piece of paper, and then you threw the piece of paper away. And I, you know, had all this email, and I accidentally answered the same question twice, three months apart, and gave the opposite advice. You gave different advice? You gave, yeah. okay, all the right. The first time I said, you know, you should work on it, here's how, and the second time I said, you should break up with her. And then somebody pointed out that I had a answer the same question twice. That's excellent. That's Which excellent. is why it's advice, not binding arbitration. No one should do anything I tell them to do in the back of the newspaper with the escort ads. Now, do you, yeah, do you, do you ever fo you follow up with people and see how they... Well, now with email, it's easy. People often write me back to tell me how things turned out. How does it... How, what's the split? What, how does it feel like you're doing? It feels like I'm doing okay. What's great now is I've been doing it for 20 years. So I'm hearing from people who are in their late 30s, who started reading me in their 20s, mm -hmm. who've put my advice into practice and met with a great deal of success. I get at least a couple of thank you notes a week from people who credit me with their um, the realism and decency and honesty and openness of their relationship with a long-term partner, where they're not having to hide their kinks or desires or conflicts and they can address things. And however weird their partner sexual interests might be or their own interests might be, they know they can always go to my column and find somebody weirder. It's true. It's true. And, um, you know, on the continuum, it makes them feel better about themselves. I often read your, read your column to find out how, how, how unfucked up I am. It's, there you it's, go. It's very nice. It's very I mean, comforting. That's, that's the idea behind <laughs> the advice column, really. There's a little bit of schadenfreude, and there's a little bit of, um, I think you store shit away. In, you know, in little corners of your brain. Some of the advice sticks, and then you'll find yourself in a similar situation five years later, and it'll mm -hmm. pop into your head. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's good. It's like uh, common sense by osmosis, or situational ethics by osmosis. All right. Well, thank you. Is there anything sure else you feel like you want to say? Um, my, other, my only other Ann Landers anecdote is I got invited on the radio the day she died, the day after she died, with her daughter, by these radio producers who thought I would tear her apart and be mean about Ann Landers with her daughter on the phone. Like, in her, and they wanted that. They yeah, wanted they wanted that. me to speak for like... Was this Fox? It was, it was NPR. Oh, wow. They wanted me to, you know, condemn Ann Landers and, uh, because, you know, I disagreed with her about certain stuff and she was wrong about certain stuff, particularly sexual issues, particularly gay stuff. And I didn't... I, I liked her column. I read it every day. I grew up in a newspaper house. It was, for me as a kid, the entree, one of the ways of entering into the newspaper, becoming a newspaper reader, was to read the Q&A, read the Ann Landers. Um, and even when I disagreed with her, I thought she was funny and had a right to her own opinions and sparked arguments. And I loved her. I thought she was great. I read her till the day she died. I read her all my life. From the time I was five until the day she died, I was an Ann Landers reader. That's amazing. That's amazing. Thank you. Sure. 
Join us for an evening of home truths and delicious dish with renowned advice columnist Ann Landers in The Lady with All the Answers, now through October 31st at Act Theater. Starring Seattle great Julie Briskman as Ann Landers, The Lady with All the Answers is an irresistible portrait of the woman who used charm, chutzpah, and one hell of a Rolodex to become America's therapist. Now through October 31st, tickets at acttheater.org.